Let us stand for our devotion. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There's a friend just found him free. Chapel. Thank you for joining us today. We are Wayman Chapel AME Church. Thank you for joining our church school this morning. Reverend Alan D. Edwards is our pastor. I'm Sister Judy Jones, Sunday School Superintendent. Thank you. Good morning to all. I was just waiting for the last seat <laughs> when they got settled. What do we believe in? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered unto Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sit it on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Most gracious Heavenly Father, once again, Father, we bow humbly before thee. Lord God, just to say thank you, Lord. Lord God, just to say and recognize that you are the Lord of Lord, our King of Kings, God. You are the Lord God Almighty all by yourself. Now, Father God, we just come to you with heavy hearts. Once again, tragedy struck. Well, Lord, well, Lord, well, Lord. And taking away 19 babies My Lord and Jesus. other adults, not including from what happened in Buffalo, New York last week. Father God, Keep us in thy care, Lord God. Help us to understand to love one another instead of spewing all this hate that's growing all this tension and growing all this hatred. All these things, Father God. Father God, but you are God and this yes. is this earth is yours, Lord God. Nobody's earth, belong, it belongs to you. Father God, help us to get in our places and know and to understand what we are charged to do, Lord God. Yeah. That charge to keep, I have, Lord God. Help me to understand what I need to do and how I need to be diligently seeking you, Lord. Yeah. Father God, be with us and bless us all and keep us, Father God. Now, Father God, there are sick members among us. We just ask that you touch and that you heal in the name of Jesus and in that way that only you know how. Allow your Holy Spirit, Lord God, to dwell deep down on the inside of us, Father God. For we need you, Lord. We need that comforter that you promised so many years ago that would come and walk here with us here on earth. Father God, we need it. We need it so desperately right now, oh God. Now, Father, bless us all and keep us, God. For we give you all the glory. We give you all the praises, God. Yes, Lord. Thank 
Thank you, Lord. Help us to say yes, Lord, in whatever it is that we do, Father God. Help us to, help us to do it honestly and do it decently and in order. Yeah. Father God, bless us all and keep us as we go through. Yeah. Now, Father God, bless the one who's going to bring the messages today. Father God, lower him down into your bosom and allow the Holy Spirit to dwell deep down on the inside and give us what thus say, your, yeah. the, say the Lord. Thank you, Father God, for everything. Be with us all. Bless the sick, the shut in, Father God, once again. Heal them, touch them, let them know, God, that you don't forget them. Father God, be with us always and help us to be mindful of the prayer you taught your disciples. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We want to thank you again for joining us today. Our lesson today is lesson 13, May 20th, May 29th, 2022. I need some new glasses. The spiritual fruit of freedom is our title. Our lesson scripture comes from Galatians 5, 16 through 26. Our focus scripture is Galatians 5, 16 through 26. Let us read the key verse together. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Galatians 5 and 25. Commencing. This I say, this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now, Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Envy, murder, drunkenness, rebellion, and such like, of the which I tell you before, and I have also told you time and time, that they which do such as shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. All, let us not be desires of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Amen. Thank you. Reverend, I will turn it over to you. Thank you. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord for another beautiful day. And one that wasn't promised, but yet and still God saw fit the blessings. Amen. Added a point of health and strength that we are able to realize that this is the day the Lord had made and we are to rejoice and be glad. And are you rejoicing today? You happy? Amen. 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 Thank God for his, his grace and his mercy. Uh, I want to thank um, Reverend V and Dr. Kena for uh, again filling in for me last week. Amen. Thank God for safe travel and a wonderful time with uh, with my family and some of my nephew graduated, I had a safe return. Weather was good all the way there, traffic was good all the way there and back. So <laughs> it was just a good, good weekend. I tried to get on uh, last Sunday morning, but I went to the, went to the uh, my oldest daughter and it started at 8.30. <laughs> so I said, oh well. <laughs> so, but I did catch in on uh, the service, the part of the service. Uh, Amen. And so, but uh, thank y'all for filling in. So Dr. Kena, 
uh, I, I know and I heard you did a wonderful job in teaching, so we're going to have to let you do it again, several times again. Amen. So uh, be prepared. We, are, we know you're already prepared, so we're going to uh, allow you to, uh, you know, to, to bring us what the Lord has said. Amen. We thank you. Uh, thank you, Reverend B, and all, all of you for, again, y'all didn't miss a beat. Amen. Let me know that what they used to say, one mommy don't stop, no show, right? <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm going, everything was still going good, so that's good. Amen. All right, today our lesson is the spiritual fruit of uh, freedom. Amen. God created us to be free. He wants us to enjoy and to just be able to uh, rejoice in the blessing that he's given unto us and to be able to uh, just be so excited about God working in our lives that we would tell somebody else about the goodness of our God. Amen. So when we look at this lesson today, this is a, a letter that Paul wrote to the church at Galatia in reference to uh, the spiritual fruit of freedom. And when we think about it, you know, we remember last week on Wednesday, we uh, was talking about, uh, again, about the uh, uh, demands of a new life. And in that demands of a new life, we were talking about how that, uh, again, the same thing that Paul was writing to the Galatians here about, uh, you know, uh, the fruits of the of, uh, spiritual fruits uh, that make us free or that we are free from. Then we think about, uh, he wrote the same thing similar to, uh, uh, the church at Coloss, the Colossians. And we talked, we're talking about that now in our Bible class about the demands of new life, which means that uh, we have some requirements uh, in order to live a righteous and holy life before Christ, a new life before Christ, that there are some things that what? That we have to do, some things we got to get rid of, amen, in order to be able to be what? To be uh, fulfilling uh, the guidelines that God wants us to fill in living a life for Christ. And so today, this is this is good lesson that ties in again with the same thing, the spiritual fruit. And so uh, uh, Paul uses uh, fruit as uh, as an example of the products that comes along with living a new life for Christ. Amen. And so when we look at it, we think about uh, here in uh, on page number seventy seven in the introduction. It says, "No one is immune to temptation." Amen. Amen. Uh, in fact, the closer you get to, to the Lord uh, and doing God's work is the, uh, is the more tempted you're going to be because the devil wants to try to get you away from doing what uh, God wants you to do. So therefore, come and he's going to consistently be on your trail, amen, to try to get you to uh, turn away or to just uh, not focus totally on what God wants you to do, amen? So we know we're gonna be tempted, uh, but the scripture tells us that with every temptation that we have, God gives us an escape route, amen? <laughs> so all we have to do is what? Not be impatient, but to be able to what? To wait on the Lord and to follow God, seek God's uh, way that he has for us to uh, escape the temptation that it comes upon us. All right, and it says most people will admit they are tempted by something. Amen, amen. Uh, he don't care. The devil don't care how he tempt you or what he tempt you with, as long as he what he he tried to get your attention. Amen. And most of the time, basically ninety nine point nine percent of the time, he gonna tempt you with something that he know you you uh, want. <laughs> amen. Something you may have said before that no, nah, that don't interest me. I can't do this or do that. And that's what he uses to tempt you because, uh, you know, if you're not rooted and grounded in the word of God, then he knows that too. And so therefore he'll tempt you with the things that you've already promised God that you wouldn't do. Amen. Um, and so uh, just like food, when he, you know, we get tempted with food, knowing all the time, we're not supposed to be all that sweet. <laughs> Uh, amen. And no matter what, what you say, you're not going to do it. just looks so good. And every time you turn around, it what? It, you're looking at some, some sweet somewhere. Uh, I have to admit that I got, I'd be tempted, man. Uh, uh, I used to eat a lot of French bread. <laughs> amen. I, I eat French bread like crazy. And so uh, uh, Dr. told me, say, well, either you're going to stop eating all that stuff that give you know that increases your A1C or whatever it is and and your uh, sugar and stuff, 
And uh, I said, well, what you been doing? She said, what you been doing? I said, oh, I think I've been doing eating a lot of bread. And, <laughs> you know, she said, I said, well, it's a late way of life. Either you eat it and I'm gonna have to give you some pills or something or you, or you adjust your eating. And now it's just as hard as everything. I kind of stay away from the bread section <laughs> in the, in the, uh, in the store, you know, because it smells so good. I said, oh man, but uh, again, what, you know, he tempts you with stuff that, that he know you really want. And we have to be strong enough in the spirit to be able to what, uh, to be able to turn away from those things, all right? And so we all admit that we are tempted by something, amen. Uh, Paul instructs the churches in Galatia that they must fight these temptations, amen. Fight these temptations. What the scripture tells us, resist the devil. And what do you do? Uh, he'll flee from us, right? Amen. <laughs> but the problem comes in at many times, we play around with the devil. Think that we can, we can handle him all by ourselves. And that's where he have, have us where he want us. Because when we think we can do it without him, uh, face to face, uh, uh, you know, toe to toe, then what? Then he already got us because he knows that what? We're going to give in eventually if we keep on trying. Amen. So that's why we need the spirit of God to help us and to be able to what? To resist the devil so he can flee from us. Uh, Paul's argument rely on God's power to resist the body's needs. Amen. Uh, human wise, uh, while we're in this human body, our flesh uh, going to have desires. Amen. And uh, once we come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ and, and confess that he is our Lord, and promise him that we're going to serve him and be obedient to his will and his commandments, then, uh, you know, we have to make sure that what we do what we can to resist the temptations or the desires of the body. Um, he was reassuring, Paul was reassuring the Galatians of what? Of the uh, freedom from sin and the law. And it is possible if we, if we follow after the spirit of God and walk in the ways of the Lord. The, this liberty is obtained through one's faith in Jesus Christ. Man, it all depends on our faith in Christ. Amen. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. So, amen. We don't know how we're going to do how he's going to do it, or how we're going to be able to do it, but what? We have faith to believe that what all things work together for good. Amen. All right. The Holy Spirit uh, will guide the, guiding their struggle with the flesh. The Holy Spirit is... Um, what all Christians are liberated from the, this struggle, amen. Through the Holy Spirit of Christ, uh, this message tells them that they can be empowered by God, amen. To what to bring us the, the freedom that God wants us to have through what through the temptations and through those desires of the flesh. That the only way we can do it or anybody can do it is what is through um, the power that God will give us to his Holy Spirit, amen. All right, look on page 78. In the middle of page 78, it said, their faith was strong at some point, amen. So at some point, their faith was strong, but now Paul sees that what? That there's a need to uh, reemphasize the, the freedom that uh, believers can have uh, through what? Through the spiritual uh, guidance of God, Holy Spirit. Amen. And so what Paul did was what he said that what that the faith was strong at some point. So he urges them to return to their place of repentance. I think there's a there's a hymn or a song that just say what take me back. <laughs> take me back to the place where I first believed. Amen. And so this is what Paul's saying. You had they had faith uh, uh, sometime before. And now he said, what? Well, when you find yourself getting weak and you find that the temptations are more and stronger than what? Then you, uh, again, remember where you first, again, uh, accepted Jesus Christ or confess your sins and, and think about how joyful it was and how the feeling was upon you that what? That now I love the Lord, so I'm going to be obedient and I'm going to follow the guidance and the commandments that God has given us. Uh, Paul uses the analogy of fruit to continue to illustrate God's love for God's people. God would not leave God's children lacking the ability to grow in grace, which means that what, that all of us, amen, God has instilled within us the ability to be able to what, grow uh, spiritually, amen. But then the devil knows that. And the more you hear the word of God, 
uh, the what? The more it's going to have an impact on your life and give you the desire to what? To strive to live a life pleasing to God. Uh, so therefore, the devil's uh, objective is to try to keep you from hearing the word of God. Amen. How do they do that? Well, the devil tells you, well, you know, I can, I don't have to go to church. You know, amen. But what? But where are you going to hear the word of God at? You know, yeah, you can read it at home. You can hear it on the television. But then there's no joy like being in the midst of, of other believers worshiping and praising God. Amen. So as long as the devil can keep you away from hearing the word of God, Making you believe that what, man, I'm on the highway to heaven. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, what? Not doing what you're supposed to do. And that is what? That is, uh, again, being taught and being uh, preached to the gospel of Jesus Christ and the word of God that will encourage you. That's why we, we, we think about doing our weekly journey. We have what? We have uh, church on Sunday. Amen. But just think about what takes place on Monday or even Sunday evening. <laughs> Man, huh? As soon as you come to church and rejoice and, and praise God on Sunday, whatever time you come, then what? The devil is already waiting to attack you and to what? And to make you forget about what you did on Sunday uh, in the service of the Lord. So therefore, what is good to have a, a midweek something, whether that's a service or Bible study to kind of what? Kind of refill you up or re-energize you and being faithful to God uh, during the week. So that way to carry you from what? From midweek up to the next time. Amen. But when 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 the devil uh, hoodwink uh, persuade people to say, well, I don't need to go to church. Uh, I can I can what I'm 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 doing good, and I believe uh, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. But then you during the course of the week when you're tempted, you're tried, and all those kinds of things. Then what happened? Then you find yourself falling further and further away from God. And I I know from experience back in my day before I really made God that promise that I'll serve him the rest of my day regardless, that what, that uh, I used to always believe that was, well, uh, I don't have to go to church, it's all right. You know, I think I was doing all right, amen, but what, but I found myself missing more uh, services than what, than what I should have been because I was like, well, if I miss one Sunday, then what, then people gonna look at you funny and then they're gonna, well, I, I stay away another Sunday before you know it, you done miss weeks and months. Amen. And then what? Then as hard as everything to get back into it, uh, you know, to try to be back to where you need to be in giving God some time and receiving what God has has for you to do. Uh, amen. So uh, in order to live uh, a holy life, one cannot, this is at the top left of page 78. Um, in order to live a holy life, one cannot be governed solely by the demands and desires of the flesh cannot be uh, governed. It means you can't make it uh, to live a holy life and follow after the demands of what the flesh requires or what the flesh desires. Amen. Because you're going to give in to one or the other. You're going to either give in to the flesh and do more what the flesh has and the flesh uh, demands are opposite to what the spiritual demands are. Amen. And so what it says uh, by the demands and the desires of the flesh. We can't live, amen, uh, trying to satisfy our, our flesh or our body desires and still proclaim that we are faithful servants of God. Amen. All right. Um, on page, the middle of page 79, it says, in this season of the resurrection of Christ, which we what? We still in the time frame of what? Of the crucifixion of Christ and the what? And the burial and then the resurrection, amen? And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more <laughs> in a little bit, uh, all right? But what? But we still now are, are still in the mindset that what? That Jesus Christ died, he was buried and he rose again. But we know that once he what? When he rose from the dead, he didn't go back to his father directly, amen? He hung around. <laughs> he hung around for some time. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But say what? In this season of resurrection of Christ, during this time frame, what? There is no better time than the present to examine one's faithful walk with God in the spirit. Amen. Huh? To examine, which means uh, take a look at ourselves and see if we are walking in the light of the Lord. If we are walking according to uh, the commandments that God has given us. If we are being obedient to Jesus Christ, amen, 
and say that what? If you love me, you keep my commandments. Right? Amen. And why? Because it's fresh in our mind to, to think about now, uh, as we just celebrated a few weeks ago, what caused Jesus to be crucified? Mm -hmm. He didn't have no sin, and even uh, Pilate and them say, what? We find no fault in him. But what? But yet still, he was crucified for what? Falsely accused uh, and what? And crucified for something that he did not do. Amen. So, so how did that affect us? How, now that it's fresh in our memory, we celebrated the, res the, the, the resurrection of Christ, uh, how much effect is that on our lives to help us to try, strive to live more like Christ each and every day? Huh? Amen. Something to think about, right? It's easy to say it, but are we really striving to be pleasing to Christ by living the life he wants us to live? Huh? All right. Uh, okay. Into our lesson. When we look at the lesson of scripture, Again, it starts with verse number 16 through verse 26. Uh, the first thing Paul says in that 16th verse, this I say then, amen, this I say then, which means what? Now he is, he is again uh, telling them something very important for them to know about the spiritual life and being obedient to the spirit of God as we journey through this Christian life. Who is he talking to? He was talking to believers. The believers in the church at Galatia. And he says, we says, he look what he says. He says, that this I said then, walk in the spirit. Amen. He used the term walk to indicate what? The life we live. Yeah. Hmm? Live in the spirit, right? Uh, amen. If we walk in the spirit, if we live following the spiritual guidance of God's Holy Spirit, then he said, What? You shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yeah. Hmm? Amen. Now, let me say, he said, first you got to walk in the spirit, right? Live, live according to the spiritual guidance. And then what? If you do that, then what? You won't fulfill the, the desires of the body or the flesh. Huh? Amen. So in other words, uh, we kind of uh, assume and look at it from that point of view. If we walk in the spirit, we shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Think about it now. If we don't walk in the spirit, then what? Then we fulfill the Lust of the flesh. Amen. So it's either one or the other. Either you walk in the spirit and not fulfilling the desires of the lust of the flesh, or you what? You're not walking in the spirit and what? You're fulfilling the desires of the flesh. Amen. So what? It means we have a choice we have to make. Amen. And how do we make choices? What helps us to make our choices? Based on what we believe or what we feel is most important to us. Huh? Amen. If the flesh satisfying the body, Satisfying the fleshly desires is more important than what? Then we're going to follow after what satisfies our bodies. Huh? Amen. You know, when we think about not criticizing, everybody got their own thing, but just think about now smoking. Huh? Doctor tells us smoking is not good for us. Huh? Amen. But what? But then because of the desires of the flesh that what? Tells the body that what? I need a cigarette. Huh? Doesn't matter what time of night, what time of day, doesn't matter how cold or how hot it is, what? You're going to get up and you're going to look for a cigarette. Huh? Or you're going to go where it needs. Why? Because your desire is what? The desires of the flesh is important to you that what? I need to satisfy my body. Even though when they tell it, well, it kills you eventually, destroying your body. Uh, amen. But what? But you're going to do whatever you need to do. Well, you have to beg somebody for a cigarette uh, or whatever you want. You're going you gonna to do what you need to do in order to get the cigarette. I remember my dad used to smoke camel. He used to smoke camel cigarette. That was that, that cigarette didn't have a butt on it. They said <laughs> it was a strong thing. But what is it? And then camel came up with a slogan saying what? Walk a mile in my shoes for a camel. Uh, amen. What mean? What? They needed a, you needed a camel or what? You didn't care how far you had to go or what it was. You were going to go that distance because why? Your body said, uh, what? I need to have a camel or I need a cigarette. Amen. And so then Paul said, what? Walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. Amen. So you see how even looking at that one particular verse, it tells us that there's a difference between what? Uh, between the spirit desires and the flesh desires. Huh? Amen. Now it's up to us based upon our relationship with Christ as to which one we gonna do. Hmm? Amen. The 17th verse, for the flesh lusted against the spirit. Hmm? Paul says, Paul says there's always 
uh, a war going on between in the, within us. Huh? The things I desire to do, I don't do. The things that I do, I what? <laughs> Amen. And so therefore we look at it and think about what? That we need to be able to know uh, again that, that the spirit and the flesh can always be uh, fighting against each other. Huh? Amen. And so um, it says what? He fight it, uh, the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. Which means what? The opposite. The opposite. They oppose each other. Huh? Now, which one wins is based upon us. <laughs> Amen. Based upon us and our relationship with who? With God. Hmm? Amen. Uh, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. That's where what? They, they war against each other. They are contrary to each other, the spirit and the flesh. And what? Therefore, we cannot do the things that we would because there's always a constant battle going on within our thoughts, within our mind as to now which one I'm going to give in to. Mm -hmm. If you love the Lord, you're going to follow the guidance of what? God's Holy Spirit. If you really want to be free from sin, amen. What? You got to follow the guidance of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Uh, 18 verse 8. But if ye be led of the Spirit, he put that if in there. Huh? Amen. Which means what? That is no guarantee that everybody's going to be led by the Spirit, right? But what? But again, it lets us know that we have a choice. If you be led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Hmm? Amen. You're not under the law because why? You're led by the Spirit. And we know that what the law was doing the Old Testament time before the coming of Christ to what? To guide people and to lead them in the way if they obey according to what? What God requires. Hmm? Amen. But when the Jesus came, then he said what? Jesus said what? I did not come to, come to destroy the law, but what? To fulfill it, uh, the Old Testament. Amen. Which means what? Which means that now it's no longer about the law to keep people in line uh, with the desires or the commandments of God, but what? But it's now because of his grace. Amen. He has already what paid our sin debt. So therefore, now it's our it's God's grace that will enable us to what to be pleasing and acceptable in His sight if we accept His Son Jesus Christ. All right. Uh, so nineteen said, "Now the works of the flesh are manifest." Now Paul is now what he's gonna he's gonna identify just because just so that somebody may say, "Well, I don't know what the desires of the flesh are." Huh? Amen. What are, what are you talking about, Paul? Saying that the desires of the flesh. Or the flesh, uh, or what is in controversy against the what against the spirit? What are you talking about, Paul? What are the desires of the flesh? So Paul makes it plain, and he says in that 19th verse, these are the what the works of the flesh, which is what uh, adultery, huh? Hey Amen. God, see how they see how they how they contradict what God says. God said what uh, do not commit adultery. But here it says, Paul said, what? The works of the flesh is what? Is adultery, which means what? You desire to have uh, a unauthorized uh, relationship with somebody, hey amen, which what? Which is, which is not your wife. Hmm? Hey amen. And then it talks about fornication. Uh, well, the single person said, well, I'm not married. No, but you're still under what God's guidance said, what? Do not fornicate. Huh? <laughs> and God had ordained what? A uh, sexual relationship to be between what? A man and his wife. Mm -hmm. Amen. A man and his wife. What about homosexuals? Amen. Amen. And God said, what? A man and his wife, right? Amen. So, so uh, your fornication, amen. It, it doesn't relieve the single person or uh, from what? From being obedient to God and what? It identifies that we all can still fall into what? Into the uh, desires of the flesh or the works of the flesh by what? Giving in to our fleshly desire mm -hmm. or what? Of having uh, uh, into a sexual relationship with what? With somebody else. Whether you're married or whether you're single. Mm -hmm. All right. Look what it says. It says also what? Uncleanliness. Uncleanliness. Huh? Amen. Uncleanliness. And we talked about that during what? During a uh, Bible study. Amen. 
It means what? You lie, you steal, you chill, you steal, you do all these kinds of things. Uh-huh. All right. Less chiffishness. Right? Uh, like in legal or uh, moral restraints, which means what? You're basically doing uh, anything that you so, so desire to do or your imagination. The Bible talks about what? Uh, they were giving up to their imaginations. They were what? Just doing whatever they thought about doing. Huh? And we see that happening there. Look, look at that shooting they did in, uh, in Uvalde. Huh? Hey Amen. What would cause 18 year old to go in and shoot kids like that? And you know, he killed anybody really, but what? He just thought about that, what he was gonna do. And what, and he did it. Uh, here in Texas, they made it, they make it easier, what? Because now you can go and buy, buy gun, any gun you wanna have without even being uh, checked on or nothing. You know, it kind of made me upset because I went, went through the class to get my concealed weapon license. <laughs> and then they tell me, now you don't need it. <laughs> Amen, but what? But just think now, people doing things for their own, with their own imagination, you know. And uh, and one other thing I throw in here, with the election they had on Saturday, now, you can see the mindset of the people how the devil is working through people. Uh, Ken Paxton is what is stand, ready to stand trial, and can spend some time in prison if convicted. And what? And the people elected him <laughs> over somebody else. Huh? What's the mindset of what? They, is, is, it, is it indicating that people people uh, prefer people that do wrong, huh? or what? Or evil, and have all kinds of bad thoughts to what? They they prefer them instead of instead of looking at what they reckon indicates or what they have done, and and saying, well, they're not qualified to be what? Or fit to be in a position of authority. Huh? Well, they did the same thing years ago with Trump. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And may do the same thing again in 2024. Huh? Pray God they don't, but what? But you still got some people that what? Believe it in him and what he's saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, me and my brother was talking over the weekend and we were talking about the war in, in uh, uh, Ukraine and Putin, what he doing? You know, when uh, Trump was in office, he had what? He was so uh, influenced by Putin that he what? He would do anything that Putin told him to do. Uh, and look at what Putin is doing now about what? Capturing Ukraine and those countries so that what? He can have, he can have uh, access to get closer and closer to what? To the Atlantic Ocean, where what? He have a closer distance between Russia, all the countries that uh, falls under Russia control, and what? And America. And now, if he had Trump in the office, huh? And Trump doing the same thing with America that Putin is doing in in Russia, then what you think? Then then what? Then America gonna be really in bad shape, huh? Hey, Amen. And so what? Uh, so you see how how that's what uh that's how the mindset of people are so what if you're not led by the spirit of god then what then you're being led by the devil huh amen what the devil came to do amen to steal kill and destroy amen he don't care who it is all he want to do is what is to destroy anything that god made all righty and so um Look at what it says. So therefore it says in the 19th verse, a uh, 20 verse it says idolatry. That's what, having any, any other gods before God. Huh? Amen. And what is a God? Anything, or anybody that you give more time to and energies, use energies for than the true and living God. Huh? So that could be a person, a place, or a thing. Could be your God. Huh? Amen. A uh, witchcraft. <laughs> uh, Amen. I mean, I ain't going to ask the question there, but you know, we still got people going, get their palms red. Huh? Amen. Still burning, burning certain things in their homes and stuff like that. Amen. Why? Because they believe that this thing, what? This, this, this has an impact or influence on their life. Huh? Amen. And so what? We, we find that many times we are led into stuff because we are not fully awake of the tactics that the devil uses. 
And if you're not careful before you realize it, what? The devil gonna have, gonna have somebody or have you falling out of things that what? That you know is not good for you. Or you know it's against God's will, but what? Yet still you find yourself doing it because why? Because you, the devil knows how to uh, gain influence on people. You remember back back when the devil used to they used to portray the devil as a as a, a, a with a tail and and horns, huh? You don't see that no more, do you? Huh? He looked just like anybody else, huh? Dress up and look like anybody. Why? Because now he realizes that what if he seems different than what uh, what he is, then what? Then people gonna stay away from it. But now he blends in with everybody, huh? Amen. Amen. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, dressed up and messed up. You know why? Because he know that if he can influence you in that, you know, then what? Then he gonna have a way. He gonna have a, a way of what? Of doing what he wanna do. All right, hatred. Mm. God, we should love everybody. But now what? The lust of the flesh says what? We can hate people. Uh, what? The lust of the flesh makes you what? Wanna hate somebody? Uh, why hate somebody? Mm. <laughs> Amen. We might not like what they do, but what? But at the same time, what? All of us were created by God. And that would say, in the image of God, He created us. Huh? Amen. Variance. Okay. Uh, variance is uh, discord, strife, conflict. <laughs> Amen. It means what? You can't get along. Hmm? Amen. And we see more and more now what? That the evidence of variances in what? In the church. Because people can't get along in the church. You find some people come to church and won't sit on a particular bench because somebody else sat there. Huh? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Why? What's, what's that about? Now, we coming in to worship God, who is a God of all, loving everybody. But you understand what? We come in to God's house with hatred in our heart about somebody. Hmm? Amen. You know, so what? We have to be mindful of this. Now, Paul is putting it point, straight to the point as to what the lust of the flesh is compared to the, the fruits of the spirit. Huh? Amen. And then said what? He says uh, seditions, uh, hearsays, uh, envy, the 20 word, envy, 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 murderers, uh, drunkenness, revelings, uh, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, which means what Paul has already told the Galatians about this before, huh? Amen. So what he is reemphasizing it now, undoubtedly, because he already he still sees some some indications that the things he taught them of this before, some of them still living by, still doing the same thing that he told them before, huh? Amen. So so therefore, what the, when you are are reinformed about some things that are wrong, then what? If you don't make the corrections after a while, what? It's going to cause you tremendously. Hmm? It's going to cause you tremendously. Hmm? Why? Because you didn't learn the first time or you didn't learn before. And so somewhere they have to what? They have to uh, turn up the heat to get your attention that what? That you're doing something that you should not be doing. All right? So Paul said what? Um, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things, what things were you talking about? Those things in verses number, uh, number 19, 20, and 21. He said, if you do those such things, this is a warning. He said what? Shall not, those that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Hmm? So why the devil want to stop you from reading the word of God? Because if you read this, that lets you know if you have any desire to get into God's kingdom, what? You got you can't get rid of this stuff. Right? Amen. <laughs> Amen. But if you don't read it, huh? Then what? Then you always say, I didn't know. Huh? <laughs> God will not destroy a person for ignorance. Huh? But what? But if you if you hear it, what do you hear in church? And they say, well, I don't go to church because I know they're going to talk about the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Huh? But if we're doing our job as believers in Christ, then what? Whether we're in church or whether we're on the street going to somewhere, what? We're going to be telling somebody about Jesus Christ. Huh? So therefore, what? God has already eliminated the excuse of somebody saying, I did not know. Because the scripture says, 
The gospel of Jesus Christ shall be preached what? To all the world before the end of time. Hmm? Everybody gonna know about it. So now what? You don't have no excuse, right? Amen. And so, and so what? Paul says that if you do these things, the lust of the flesh, the desires of the flesh, you shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God. Huh? Now he didn't leave them hanging. Now look what he says. He gave them the, he, he has the option. Now he said, now what? I just told you what you don't need to do, huh? If you want to enter the kingdom of heaven. But now let me show you, Paul, Paul is showing them now what? What the fruits of the spirit are. What it benefits a person if they fight after the spirit of God, which is which is saying what? Walk in the spirit. If you live according to the guidance of the spirit, Paul said, now what? Now this is what you're going to enjoy. Hmm? Amen. It says uh, in 22, it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love. Starts off with love. Huh? Amen. Love covers a multitude of sins. Huh? Amen. First of all, if you love God, you can love anybody. <laughs> I don't care who you are. I don't care what they do to you. Amen. You can still see what? Uh, good in somebody. If what? If you love God. Hmm? And just think, it starts off with love. Paul started off with love. Now just think, if you love God, then what? Then you won't be, you won't be uh, doing stuff to uh, destroy or to harm somebody else. Hmm? Amen. So he said, well, the fruit of the Spirit is what? By walking in the Spirit of God is what? To enable you to love everybody. Then it says, what? Joy. Huh? This joy that I have, the world, the world can't take it away. Hey Amen. What well, you can be have joy because joy does not come about because something outside, huh? Hey Amen. No matter what the situation you're going through, you can still have joy if you walk in the spirit of the Lord. I'm sure all of us here have had some bad days, some good days, but I won't complain. Why? Because I join my heart knowing that whatever condition God allows me to go through, what? I still know God is in control. Even with the shortages of all that stuff going on in the world today with the high prices and all that, what? If you have the love of God in your heart, what? You still believe that what? God going to make a way somehow. She was mad. Yeah. She was mad. And so it says what? It says that love, joy, and oh, no. huh? Peace. You are satisfied. You still are content. Paul said, What? I'm not content in whatever state I'm in. Why? Because he got the peace of God in his heart. Why? Because we're walking in the spirit of the Lord. Hmm? Amen. All right? Long suffering. It doesn't matter how long. What? I'm going to do it. Because God promised never to leave me nor to forsake me. And once you know that what? God's going to be with you one way or the other. Then what? Then you can do whatever you're going through. Because what the scripture says, we the men do for a night. But joy is going to come in the morning. So what all I got to do now is what? Is to wait till the morning come. Huh? Be patient. Be patient. You can make it with what? You can endure to keep on going until you get to the finish line. Huh? <laughs> Amen. All right, and so what? Uh, long suffering. He says uh, also gentleness, uh, goodness, and faith. Huh? Meekness in 22, 3. Meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So all those things, the fruit of the spirit that Paul mentioned in verses 22 and 23, he said what? There's no law here. Hmm? Don't cost you anything. <laughs> Amen, don't cost you anything. To what? To enjoy and to be free to what? Through the fruits of the spirit. Hmm. Amen. All right. 24 says, and they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. The lust and the affections uh, are what? Uh, uh, of the body, the desires of the body. But what is it? It says that what we have crucified, a believer have crucified those what? Uh, with Christ. Once we acknowledge Jesus Christ, repent of our sins and acknowledge Christ as our Lord and Savior, believe he died for our sins, he was buried and he rose again. Say now what? All those 
uh, lust of the flesh, things that Paul mentioned well, should have been uh, done away with once we came to Christ. Hmm. Now don't think that the devil gonna leave you alone. <laughs> he gonna still try to get you, get you to what? To go back, the old, be the old you. Huh? Be the old you, all right? Uh, so it says, if we live in the spirit, what spirit? The spirit of God, allowing the God's spirit to lead and guide me, you in the way that God wants you to go. If we live in the spirit, then what? Let us also walk in the spirit. Huh? Which means what? It's not just about talking. It's about what? Living the life that represents Jesus Christ. Huh? And believe you me, people will, will appreciate and understand you better if they see you living the life of Christ than what you're saying. They'll, they'll pay more attention to what you're doing than what you're saying. Hmm? Amen. Because why? If you're doing it, that means it's coming out of your heart. Your heart is what? Is instilling you, is, is filled with the spirit of God, which is what? Which is allowing you or encouraging you to live for Christ. Hmm? And 26, say, let us not be desirous of vain glory. Huh? Vain glory, which is mean what? Glory that means nothing. Huh? Being recognized for, for something that's not going to amount to anything. Hmm? <laughs> Amen. So if you live according to the lust of the flesh, what does that mean? All it leading to is destruction. It's not going to amount to anything. It's vain. Huh? Amen. But it says what? Provoking one another, envying one another. Huh? Don't do those things. Amen. All right. Any questions or comments? Dr. Keener, amen, amen. Yeah, it's easy to say, but it takes dedication, commitment, and devotion to Christ to be able to be uh, walk in the spirit of the Lord, amen. Um, as you say, a lot of times people feel that committing their life to Christ is giving up happiness, is sort of like putting them in prison, you know? But then that's the freedom that we have. Once you get to know Christ, then what? Then there's no better joy you can have. Amen. Then what? Knowing that you are living for Christ. And our reward is not about this world. Uh, amen. It's about what? What's after this world and this life is over? Is what we're going to rejoice and enjoy the benefits and the beauties of what? Of living a life for Christ. Walking in the spirit of God. Amen. Because all the troubles of the world will be over. 
<laughs> Amen. All right, as we close, let's look at uh, the page 80 under the, the life application. It says, we live in a world that seems to have abandoned the uh, virtues, uh, abandoned the fruits of the spirit. Huh? Amen, which is what? We just talked about the fruit of spirit. We love, joy, peace, all those. We living in a world now where what? Where you, it's hard to find or to see those kinds of traits, what? Among people now. Everybody's out for themselves, mostly. Uh, the majority of people out for themselves. The majority of people uh, try to destroy instead of build up. Amen. It says, although there is still kindness and care in the world, there's a lack of patience, joy, goodness, and self-control. Huh? Those are what? The fruits of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. God calls us to be children who walk Amplifying the spirit of love that Christ eluded, uh, eluded uh, when he died on the cross for our sin. Hmm. The spirit that God showed through his son, Jesus Christ, for dying for our sins, said what? It said that's what God calls us as believers in Jesus Christ to do, to live according to the spirit. The scripture is a pre prescription for those who are suffering from the world's chaos and stress. It is a treatment plan that can only be ordained through a personal relationship with Christ and in dwelling of the Holy Spirit. Hmm. You can't buy it. You can't go nowhere else and look for it. It has to come through Jesus Christ. Uh, through God's spirit, it enables one to find peace when the world around you is at war. Only the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will enable us to make it through these tough times, uh, times of uncertainties and all those kinds of things. A person who can, in the middle of page 80, a person who can remain spiritually connected to God is someone who finds joy amid hardships and pain. The most important word there is connected. You stay connected to God and what? You can endure anything. Huh? That's how Jesus made it. He stayed connected to his father. Amen. And he was able to go through all he went through. Amen. And now he has overcome the world and everything in it because he didn't lose sight on his father. He stayed connected to God through prayer, amen, through fellowship, and to what? And to being led by the Spirit. All right, questions, comments? God bless you. God keep you. Here's our prayer on this last Sunday in May. Amen. The spiritual fruit of freedom only comes by way of God through his Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Edwards, for the teaching of our Sunday school lesson for the day. We hope and pray that you all enjoyed it. It was a good lesson, a reminder of what we are or what we should be doing and striving for. Next week, our Sunday school lesson will revolve around Isaiah 47. That is going to be our background scripture, the devotional reading for that week in which the lesson will revolve around is Isaiah 47, 10 through 15. So that's why I was giving you the scripture. Amen. We hope that you have an enjoyable week next week. Let us not forget the Sunday School Convention will convene here next Friday, beginning at 8 o'clock a.m. We're going to serve breakfast, and then we're going to take the children to the park for a little while. So, so 
be sure and if you can come out and enjoy what we have for you. On Saturday morning, breakfast again will be served from eight to nine. And then after that, we'll have breakout classes, in which we will be using Wheatley School next door. They're going to allow us to use the classrooms like they did before, before the pandemic. <laughs> so we're excited because we have not been together like this as a whole in over three years. But God is in control and that's who we're giving it to and it's going to be a success. And with all that said, if all minds are clear, let us all stand. <laughs> Let us repeat the misfit. May the Lord watch between me and thee when we're absent one from the other. Amen. You're dismissed. Thank you. Amen.